This is In Touch with Terry, a power packed podcast for the medical aesthetics industry. I just discovered your podcast and I feel like I've hit a gold mine. This is someone who's got a lot of knowledge. She's been there, done that. Terry Ross is a former Fortune 500 executive, international speaker, founder and co CEO of Apex Platform, and Terry Ross Consulting. Just listening to her energy and her passion and just how hardcore she is. Her knowledge of the industry and just her connections in general are phenomenal. In Touch with Terry will bring you solutions to increase operational and employee efficiency and practice profitability. Plus, feature some of the top industry experts as guests. The Apex team literally changed the game for us. Terry, your courses and your podcast are just so helpful. She made me feel like I could do this. Three, two, one. Here we go! Now, here's Terry. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of In Touch with Terry tribe. I'm so glad to be back. It has been a hot minute since I've done a solo podcast, but I really thought it was important as we start to go into the second half of the year to talk about something that you guys all know that is really, really near and dear to my heart and what I have studied my entire career. And that is the purpose and the value of sales training for aesthetic practices specifically. And I'm going to give you six proven methods of what sales training can do for your team that will increase your patient outcomes and again, increase the profitability in your bottom line. You know, it's, it's so interesting. I, I've, I launched my sales training curriculum back in 2019. I've up-leveled it. I've rewrote the content. We wrote a finance course. And it's so interesting. You know, I, I currently do probably, I don't know, 20, 20 plus conferences a year. And focus a lot on, you know, consults that convert and phone skills and conversions and treatment plans and everything to do related with sales. But I want us and for you guys listening to really just take a minute, shut your eyes. And I I want you to be open-minded again, to a new way of thinking. I want you to be open-minded to recognizing that if you are listening and you're a provider of any sorts, that you chose that career for a reason. You chose to help patients and clients. And in part of doing that, it's your obligation. I'm going to say it again. It is your obligation as a provider, right? To diagnose, right? To do an H&P, to do testing, to uncover, right, what's wrong so that you can build that treatment plan. And the concepts are the same in aesthetic medicine, but for some reason, we don't do it. We don't do it because we don't want to be salesy. We think the client can't afford it. We put our own notions around what they think they might need. We tend to treat patients as a symptomatic approach about the one thing that they that bothers them. We don't want to be pushy. It's all these negative words. But I really want you to think that at the end of the day, if you're an educator, again, it's your obligation to treat that patient and give them the best possible outcome, which is going to require multitude of treatments for them to get to the best outcome. But how do we get them there? Okay, so we're going to talk a lot today about the value, what it means to train, the risks that you take because you don't train, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that you could be losing, the high turnover that it can create, perhaps affecting your bottom line. When if we think about the value of training, any training, right, is it's the number one area and investment. I said investment, okay, not an expense that you can possibly make in your practice with the highest return on investment. So before we dive in, for those of you that don't know me, thank you again if you're listening to this for the first time and for my tribe that are my ride or dies, I love you so much for always tuning in. You make this possible for me. You help me continue to create content that brings value to you because that is my sole intention is to serve back and and give to you the things that you need to be successful. But you know, my sales career And why should you care? Why does it matter? What trust and value do I bring? And I'm going to share that with you. Again, I'm from the Midwest. I've spent my entire career literally 
in medicine. I went to medical school. I decided I preferred the business side of things. My first sales job was with Ethicon Endo, which is a division of Johnson & Johnson. I was selling radioactive seeds for prostate cancer. The training was six weeks. From there, I have been in endocrinology for five years, working with human growth hormone for kids with short stature, asthma, allergy, cardiology. I got into aesthetics in 2007, where I was the West Coast Director for Metasys, which is now Gelderma, brought the team to number two within the first year, beating out people that had tons of previous aesthetic experience, and I didn't have it. I was working for EMD Serona, which is the tech company in endocrinology, but I hustled and I had a very strong track record of success. And this is not to pat myself on the back. This is just for me to impress upon you that I have literally spent and studied my entire career studying what does it mean to sell? How do you work with clients? How do you sell to doctors? How do you sell to patients? From Metasys, I went to Zeltique. Now that's Allergan, an Abbey company. I launched Cool Sculpting in the US and Canada. I was the third director hired before it went IPO. Um, I had an opportunity to own a medical spa in Beverly Hills with three surgeons in a derm. So I got to experience what it felt like to work with patients inside of a medical spa. Paul Nassif was one of my first clients, Garth Fisher, some heavy hitters. And again, I'm sharing this with you because I, I've really done it. I've done it all. The things I teach, the things I talk about, the tools, the training, the resources, the tactics, the strategy, which is why we developed for us with Dr. Renato Saltz and and Isaac Musley, my co-CEO with Apex, is because we know the industry lacks the education. And I'm, to some degree, I'm I'm somewhat grateful for that because it, it allows us an opportunity to have a job that I love to do and that I know has proven a significant return on investment and that it impacts lives, that I want you to feel empowered that you can do it. So that's a little bit about my sales background and why you should actually give a shit. I didn't just read a book and pretend I know how to do it. I've done it. I've been so humbled by the ability to have so many clients that I've worked with that have hired me to come out to their practice for a couple of days where they invest in their team. So Again, I I said, you know, the purpose of this podcast is really around what is sales training? What is the value of it? What can it do for your practice? What can it do for your team? And what are the six metrics and proven methods that it's going to do for you? And I and I want you to think about those when I get there. But you know, I wanted to do this podcast now more than ever. One, I said in the beginning that it's we're going into, you know, the second half of the year. Two, we know private equity is very aggressive. They are here. They're not going away. They have a lot of money. They want to buy practices, but they only want to buy practices that are highly efficient, highly profitable, with the strong EBITDA, so that you can get the highest multiple. I want you to think about what I just said, because if you have a medical aesthetic practice, whether you're an NP, a PA, a doctor, a surgeon, a cosmetic derm, you know, an owner, a business owner, whatever you are, if you have a business in the medical aesthetic space, you're an entrepreneur, you are leading a team, you need to have good culture, you need to have expectations, they need to know what their job is, they need to understand what KPIs are tied to their job, and more importantly, you need to measure the outcome. If we don't do that, what are we doing it for? I know you can't do surgery till you're 90. And then we look at the med spa space and it's not just passive revenue. I mean, yes, you you want it to be that. But people want these non-surgical treatments prior to getting surgery. More importantly, I teach the value. I hate the word upselling. It makes makes me cringe. We're not upselling anything. But we are taking the time to get to know the patient, to build trust, to build rapport, to understand why they're there, to qualify them. Are they the right patient? Credential the practice, credential the provider, put value on the treatment plan, charge for the consult, get to know the patient. This isn't a one and done and in and out. And I'm only going to talk to Terry about, you know, the Botox that she wants because I think she can't afford it. No, you believe 
that your philosophy of your company is that you are going to treat the patient in a global perspective, holistically, comprehensively, so that I'm exposed to all the treatments that you do and offer. And I'm sure some of you right now, you could be sitting there going, I do that. I already do that. I do that. But do you? I mean, do you really? In a consistent and methodical process that is repeatable. Because it's one thing to say I do it, but I promise you, I talk to people every day. As a surgeon, sometimes it's, well, I'm just going to talk to them about you know, the facelift. And then if, if they want to get these other non-surgical things, they can, or I'll go have them talk to Susie. It's fragmented. That's great. But that is not a repeatable, methodical process. If you believe, truly believe, that if somebody comes in for a facelift, rhinoplasty, breast dog, tummy tuck, I don't care whatever it is, for a surgical procedure, there should always be a pre-op plan and a post-op plan. Again, what is the quality of my skin, my tone, my texture, my pigment? Maybe I need, you know, lasers and skincare and retail and hydrofacial, and then I get the surgery and then I get a post-op plan. Doesn't that make sense? We want our patients to protect the investment of the surgery. And so the same is going to go for the non-surgical. Maybe I have loose skin, but I may require fillers and Botox and lasers in order to get the outcome I'm looking for. But the only way to get the outcome I'm looking for is if you get to know me, me, you know, Terry Ross, if whoever your patient is, I want you to think about something. You know, it costs around 250 to 350 for a med spa lead, 500 or more for a surgical lead. It's not about how beautiful your office is, how great the equipment is, how skilled your providers are. Yes, how wonderful your website is, and it's amazing. You definitely need all of those things. But I think sometimes we get lost and we get twisted that we need all these external shiny things, but what we don't have is a skilled team. When we think about the roles in the practice, right, your front desk, your guest relations, your patient concierge, whatever title you give them, then you have your medical providers, doctors, NPs, PAs, MAs, RNs. And then you have MAs, right? And then you have your patient care coordinator. You know, you you have a marketing team. We have a whole lot of people we pay for, but have you really said, I am going to invest X amount of money to have Terry come out out to my practice for two days, come train my team, or I'm going to invest in the Apex platform where it's on demand because the ROI that I'm going to get from it is exponential. And we have so many case studies to share. So many. Someone just came off of our 4S, a surgeon in Jersey with the second practice he's building in New York. He said, Terry, your training was magnificent. And I got five new consults yielding $300,000. That's a lot of money, you guys. Would you want that? So I'm always so personally impacted when I go train. And I recently just came back from Idaho um, with a dear, dear friend of mine, a very successful nurse practitioner with three locations. She's been in business 15 years. So again, you can sit back and be like, I, you know, we do this. I'm super busy. I'm booked out. You know, my team already knows what they're doing. Maybe that's true. And I hope to God it is. And I hope that you are thriving. But if you're suffering in patient conversions, in closing, in asking questions, in the follow-up, in increased revenue per hour, in objection handling, and in the follow-up process, in any of these areas, you have to just take a minute and just check yourself and be and say, wait a minute, do I listen to phone call tracking? One, do I have phone call tracking? Do I listen to the calls? Do I see how many came in? Do I see what was converted? Why were they converted? Why not? If why not, what's the process? What's the plan? What's the why? Was it the training that needed to be improved? Was it not a good quality patient perhaps coming in? You know, when I look at the consultations, so if we think about the cascade, right? Inquiry to consult, consult to close. How much did I book? What's your average spend per patient? 
do I come back? What's my retention percentage? You know, if my conversions are under 70%, there's a problem. And, and so it really goes down to, you know, when I was just recently here in Idaho and, and look, you guys, I invite you. There's a video on, on, on um, my Terry Ross consulting inter- Instagram and, and some feedback from this practice. Go, go see what they had to say. There's no glass ceiling of education. And as a provider, you continuously spend time to attend clinical conferences, all of these conferences that I see most of you at to advance your clinical skills. But how come we don't give the same credence to our business, right? When we're thinking about our goals, our forecast, our budget, our team, how we hire, how we train, how we retain them, you know, why is that? And I get it. It's scary. I can say this because I I managed, I was a managing partner of a medical spa. You know, there's a lot of people that don't have true sales skills training. And that if you're a practice manager, it might be hard to hold everybody accountable because you don't know either. So part of why I love this is because we've impacted so many lives. I give so many tools and resources and tactics that if you hold your team accountable and you use these methods, these proven methods, you'll have a couple million dollars growth, exponential growth in the bottom line. And so when I was at this practice for two days, you know, I love when people are fully invested, when you, 25 people come sitting in a room, making everyone role play, right? Embracing a new way to do things. Even if you've been in business for 15 years, even if you're busy, even if you're successful, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, what do you expect of your team and how much more money could you make? How much more confident are they going to be? How much more competent are they going to be? How much money are you losing or how much money can you be gaining? And so people say to me, Terry, what is sales? Sales is simply a transfer of emotions. It's not about you. It's about understanding very specific things. You have to get the patient, the client to uncover emotionally how something makes them feel. So when they're coming in to talk about the wrinkles or fine lines, or they had a baby and they're overweight or whatever it is, that's the problem. That's why consults are so important. How are you going to get to know me in 15 or 30 minutes, even if it's an hour? I literally have created these 11 questions. If you ask the 11 questions in a sequential order and literally do nothing else but ask these 11 questions, it will give you the exact roadmap of where to take the call. And I promise you, I promise you that it will allow you to overcome every objection because of what and how the client answered it. And it will allow you to close them with a comprehensive treatment plan that could be thousands and thousands of dollars versus just the, you know, I want to come in for some Botox today. Because again, it is getting to know the patient. What can they expect when they're in the consultation room? That we're using the cosmetic interest questionnaire to expose them to other things. That you're letting me know we're going to be here for 45 minutes or an hour and that you came in for this, but you also checked off this. What would you like to talk about, Terry? you know, my intention for you, right? You're credentialing yourself. I'm the doctor. I'm the nurse. My intention for you during this next 45 minutes is this. Do you see how kind you're walking me through this process? And the same goes for when that person answers the phone. They're going to say the exact same thing. So there's this continuity of care. And then the patient's never going to feel sold to. Because what you're going to be doing is, again, uncovering my needs, what am I willing to do? What have I done in the past? How long has this been bothering me? What treatments have I had to try to solve it? Was I compliant? Was I not? Did it work? Why not? If not, how come? How committed am I to not feeling that way anymore? That's a key question, you guys. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm either so committed. I'm, I, I hate feeling the way. I hate feeling this way. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes. That's going to help, right, defend, oh, well, how much is it going to cost? Oh, I can't afford that. Well, wait a minute. What I heard you saying, Terry, 
is that you are fully committed, that you've been feeling this way, you've been feeling bad about yourself. I don't want to give away the gold because this is all in my training curriculum. I just, I really want you guys to be thinking of the power of it. And that's just in the consultation piece. I mean, there's a whole section on phone skills and web leads and the, the conversion and the way you talk to people and again, how you qualify them. But I know I'm speaking a lot here because I'm so passionate about it, if you cannot tell, but it comes from a place of we can't afford to be ignorant. We can't afford to settle for mediocrity. We can't afford to settle for status quo and think our team knows what to do. We can't afford to not hold them accountable. We can't afford to not put metrics and measures and KPIs on their roles because everybody should be a high contributor and everybody should embrace this value and opportunity to be better and to do better. Because when you learn the fundamentals of what sales is, from an emotional response from a patient, the value that you can bring, that you're ultimately helping them get the best outcome. Someone said at one at one of the trainings, you know, she she had her arms crossed and she's like, I'm I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. This isn't applicable to me. What do you mean you're not doing this? What are you not going to give the patient the treatment plan? Of course you would. Of course you would. So why in aesthetic medicine? Do we feel this negative way? What are you not going to tell me that I might need four syringes of something and a, and a halo and you know microneedling? Maybe I need all these things. Because if you were to ask me the 11 questions and ask me how I really feel and how it makes me feel and what bothers me and what have I done in the past, if you get down to the nitty gritty, down and dirty, I'm going to tell you. It's the questions that get the client to say all the things that bother them and why, which then allows you to open it up to say, okay, Terry, based on what I heard you saying, you said you're in your forties, you've been feeling old. You know, I laugh when I teach, this is funny. You know, you're dating, you're on Bumble, nobody's swiping. You've tried this laser, that laser, it didn't work. You only did one. You feel, you know, you're feeling this way about yourself, whatever it is, I can take you down this path. And, and what I also heard you saying, Terry, is that you didn't want to feel that way anymore. It's making you feel self-conscious. You want to date. Again, no, nobody's swiping. This is, this is a joke, but this is funny. I, you know, I, I try to make it a little lighthearted and funny. But the whole point is, is that when you get someone to talk about their emotional state of being, who the hell, when you're ready to give me that treatment plan that's going to be you know, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 or more if it's surgery, because you believe, you fundamentally believe in your heart and as a provider that it is the right thing to do because that's what I said I wanted. I want to feel better about myself. Then damn it, it is your obligation. This isn't selling anything. You're not selling me on the bullshit. You're educating me. You're educating me on all the treatments that are possible to get me the outcome I'm looking for based on what I said I wanted and because you believe it's the right thing to do. And it would be a disservice if you didn't do that. What are you not going to tell me? You're not going to tell the patient the things that they need. They need it if they need it. And, and as you can see, and, and my, I'm so passionate about this because I had a medical spa in Beverly Hills. I had to figure out a way to scale in a very competitive environment. Three, 400 people around me all doing the same damn thing. How are you going to increase revenue when everybody does the same thing? It's because you believe with passion and desire that it's the right thing. And when you believe that, what ultimately happens is that, one, you're building trust and rapport with the patient. You're creating more value. You're ultimately getting better patient outcomes. You're getting increased revenue per hour because you believe in the treatment plan. You're getting higher retention and you're getting lifetime value. I said I was going to give you six proven methods here. And those six proven methods are, again, building trust, value, increased revenue per hour, retention, and lifetime value. I mean, these are some powerful, powerful things here. So you guys, I know I'm leaving you with so much information and I hope that you found this valuable. I really, really, really 
hope that you can see the opportunities here of investing in sales training and the exponential return that you'll get by investing in your team, investing in the quality of their training, because ultimately that is what your business deserves. And again, there's no glass ceiling to education. It is a constant, constant learning that we have to do. We have to push ourselves. We have to get out of our comfort zone. That's the only way that we learn is to get uncomfortable, to do things that we're not typically, you know, good at doing. But more importantly, when we know that there's a better outcome on the other end, you're like, holy shit, I'm not willing to not do it. Okay. So with that said, I love y'all so much. I, again, I really hope that you sit with these things that I was sharing with you today and recognize the value and the outcome that you can receive um, from, from investing in training. So as always, please, 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 if you found this valuable, I, would, I, I invite you to share this podcast with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Let your team listen to it so they can embrace this. Again, we have a, a, you know, the second half of the year to go. And if you are ready for a hell yeah to say, listen, I want higher revenue. I want a more confident, more confident team then I would love to hear from you. You guys know where to find me. Again, this is the In Touch with Terry podcast. Uh, you can reach me at terry at terryrust.com. And I cannot wait to see you guys on the next episode. I've been in touch with Terry. Ciao, guys. Thanks for listening to In Touch with Terry. We invite you to schedule a discovery call with our Apex team. The link to apexplatform.com can be found in the show notes. Thanks again for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode of In Touch with Terry.